Tatu Mowi Gai, Uki. Under the Silver Lake is the second film from David Robert Mitchell, who actually made It Follows, which, as we know, was a, a very successful film in some ways, but a lot of people hate it because they were missold information. So, Under the Silver Lake, as we know, it was in main competition at the Cannes Film Festival. It was not best received by the critics and, well, even by the jury. But I was quite excited to see it at the back end of this year. I was expecting it to come out in UK cinemas and we expected it to come out in America. And there was this massive push pushback. There was rumours of Robert Mitchell having to potentially re-edit a two hour and 20 minute film. There was a lot of hate. It came out in France in the summer and the French liked it. And I really wanted to see this film, so I bought the Blu-ray from France. So see, I did not illegally stream this movie. I bought the Blu-ray from France. Anyway, for me, I enjoy a good noir-esque film. And once I saw the trailer for Under the Silver Wake, I just thought, damn, this is right up my alley. Under the Silver Lake has a very simple premise. It follows the story of a young man whose neighbour disappears. And we don't know where she is. He has built a connection from one night of hanging around with her. And he goes on this quest through the dark underbelly and the quirky underbelly of Los Angeles. Under the Silver Lake is a gigantic hipster noir. It's quirky, it's vibrant, it is interesting, it's pop culture. It is... I think, a very good film. David Robert Mitchell masterfully has crafted this film into a way that you respect him a lot more for what he's done. The, from the point I'm seeing from this is that he really references the older films of the 30s and the 40s and he really tries to keep that stylistic view of very long shots, very slow pacing zooms. He just takes his time with the film and he's really just trying to show this element of Los Angeles that we may not always hear about and we go and visit very odd people, very odd situations. I don't really want to spoil this film for you but Robert Mitchell just takes you on this really interesting journey but it has no real point. No spoilers. There is no overlying message in this film. It just is a very interesting and fun journey. The story, the motive of this film is very simple. It's very original in some ways. You understand what he's trying to achieve with Andrew Garfield. You are understanding how he's getting to very certain points. But the overlying pacing of the film does really derive from the actual funny quirkiness of it. It just becomes a bit boring sometimes. There is a, there, there are a few dull moments and maybe he could have benefited from maybe recutting this film, but he didn't go for that. Maybe after a few rewatches, and trust me, I really want to rewatch this film as many times as I can because there is so much to absorb within it. Maybe I will understand more for what Robert Mitchell was going for, but otherwise, I like it. The vibrancy and the freshness of this film is just so sun-soaked, drenched. It just gives you that Cali vibe where you're just going through this day-to-day -day life of Andrew Garfield, but at the same time, it's just very mundane. He has a very mundane existence. He has a very sad life. The way that he ciphers through things is very interesting because he really is trying to repress his actual existence. He's really just trying to take interest in various things such as his missing neighbor where he is now just thinking, I need to find her. This is just really a way for him to just hide away from what he has as responsibilities. He has overpaid rent, he has, a drug addiction, he just has sex with everybody, he just has no structure in his life and this is a journey where he's just trying to hide away what is really going on within him. This is a very meandering tale, it is a very world building kind of tale. You have vibes of Inherent Vice, Zodiac, it's all about obsession, it's all about the journey, it's all about just finding the answer and how you maybe try to adjust to 
what is going on in your world. I can see why people don't necessarily like this film. I can see why, because you have no real message, you don't really have much answers, you are just given scenarios where you're just like, well, what am I to take from this? The scene in particular with music from various decades, you'll know what it is once you've seen it, I was like, fucking hell, how did we get to this situation? I just couldn't believe where we got to. And I feel like it's one of those scenes where I'm really gonna have to think about it for a very, very long time. When I think of Andrew Garfield, I would never really associate him with this kind of film. He is really good in this film, and I really enjoyed what he did. I think that he engrossed what Robert Mitchell wanted from him, and he really just projects it so well within the screen. And Under the Silver Lake really wouldn't have worked without him. I really liked Garfield a lot in this film, and it's very good to see him making more interesting films, obviously with films like Silence, his run in Angels in America, and now with Under the Silver Lake, we're really seeing in Andrew Garfield that the world kind of needs right now, and it's just a very interesting performance from him. Under the Silver Lake will not be for everyone. I can understand this, this is fine, I accept it. But I highly suggest you watch it when it comes out in the UK. Mubi are distributing it, so it will be on Mubi Online and it will be in some select cinemas at some point. If you cannot wait that much, there is a Blu-ray for sale in France. Give David Robert Mitchell your money. You know, he kinda could make another good movie. Obviously, all my information is below here. Follow me on whichever platform you wish. I am going to Hong Kong in like tomorrow, so it's all exciting. And there will be a review for Vice while I'm away, and you should also check that out. And obviously, as we say on this channel, Dale, Danke, Obrigado, Merci beaucoup, Arigato, Dankeschön, Bitchin, all the shit. And obviously, never change.